Okay, so I've made a bunch of tutorials covering how to make things in Udon, but I've never actually explained how I know what nodes to use. So I'd like to address that in this video. Now for my first example, here I have a lamp, and I'd like to make it turn on when I click this button. So first of all, let's just set up the button. First, we just want to select our button, we're going to come over to Add Component, and we're going to add a Mesh Collider. This will allow us to interact with the button, but as we don't want the players to be able to walk on it, I'm just going to set Is Trigger to equal True. Now, we just need to make a component for our script to go inside, so I'm going to go Create Component Udon Behavior. We just need a script to go inside this Udon Behavior component, so I'm going to come down to my project window and go right click Create Udon Udon Graph Program Asset, and I'm going to call this Light Script. Then we just want to drag and drop it into our Udon component and open up the Udon graph. And now that we're in the graph, let me just speedrun making this button. To turn on this light, we need to use a light set enable node. We then want to plug an event interact into it, set its ball to be true, and in the instance slot, I'm going to give it a public light variable. Now we just want to come back into our scene view and drag and drop our light into its public variable slot and hit play. And now that we're in the world, we can see that when we click this button, it turns in our light. Awesome! Okay, okay, okay. So how on earth did I know what nodes to use? Well, when it comes to nodes, I like to separate them loosely into three parts, and all three of them are shown here. First, we have the event that says when the node plays. I actually covered this in my last video, though it seems that few people have actually watched that one, so go check it out if you haven't already. Next, we have the variable, which I'm only partly going to go into in this video. And then finally, we have the doing nodes, which is where the code actually does some calculations or sets a value. Let's start by covering how I knew to use that node. Well, first, in order to understand that, I believe we need to go over components and what on earth all this means. You see, I can come into my scene view, and we can see that I've got all these objects. And let's say I wanted to add a cube into my scene. I could come over here and I could create 3D object cube and move it over here. Now we have a giant cube that's in our scene. However, that wasn't the only way we can create this cube. You see, this cube over here has some game object values, it has a transform component, it has a mesh filter component, a mesh renderer component, and a box collider component. If we were to recreate all these components, we could recreate this cube. So I could come over here and I could go create empty, and I'm just going to put this, I'm just going to fly around and go control shift F to place it roughly in a good location. I'm then just going to reset its rotation, because our cube has no rotation. Then I can come over here and go add component, and we first need a mesh filter, and this defines what mesh is on this object. So I'm just going to come over here, hit this drop down menu, and find the default cube. Then we can go add component and create a mesh renderer. And now we've created the component that will actually render this object to the player. However, currently it has no material, so I can come up here and click and find the default material. Now the other thing this component has is it has a box collider on it. So we can come over here and we can go add component, and we can create a box collider. And now this object has collision. So you see, we managed to recreate the cube by reconstructing all its parts. And you know what, this is a very important distinction to make. When you come in here and you right click and create these objects, these are all presets. Every single one of these can be created via an empty game object and just adding the correct components. However, that's a bit inefficient, and so they have a bunch of presets that you can use in order to speed up your development process. So with all that said, we can actually expand upon this and actually combine presets in order to do what we want. For example, what if I wanted to make it so that whenever you click this cube, light emits from this cube. Well, there are two ways of doing that. First, I could come into my game object, and I could just create a point light on it. And now we see we've got a point light. Let me just change the color to make this a bit more obvious and increase the intensity. And now we can see we have a red light coming out of this cube. Now, in order to toggle on and off this point light, you could come in here and just toggle on and off this game object, but there's actually no reason to have a second game object for this. We could simply grab this light. We could copy this component, and we could come up here and paste component as new. And now we see we've got the light on the cube itself. So I can just delete this object. And so now we have a light on our game object. And we can toggle on and off the light just by toggling on and off the component itself. Okay, so that's components, and they can be used in many different ways. But the reason I want to talk about this is that Unity is very modular in creation, and all of its coding is done modular as well. So if we just come back to our initial scene, I want to jump back into Udon Graph. So how do I know to use this light set enable node? Well, if I select my light object, we can see the light component. This is the thing we're directly calling with this light variable, but I'll explain that a bit later. What we need to know is that what we've done here is this is the node that will tell a light component to toggle on and off its enable state. If I was to simplify that down a little bit more, the reason this node exists is to toggle on and off this checkmark. Now, while we're on checkmark, what would I want to do if I want to change a different value inside this component? Well, okay, so I've told you how to turn on and off this light checkmark, but what if we wanted to change something else? Let's say the range. Well, to do that, I'd do use a light set range node. 
and this node will change what this range value is. So currently it's 2.9, and so I could say set it to 3.9. And so whenever this node is played, it's not plugged in currently, but whenever this is played, it would change this range value to be 3.9 instead. Let me just put that back. Okay, what if we want to change the type of it? Well, we could use a light set type node instead. And currently this says spot, and this says spot, we could change it to a directional point, area, rectangle, a disc, just like we can do over here. Now, you notice that we have two extra options in our light component, and that's just because sometimes you can change things in code that you can't change in the inspector. It's something to be aware of. Well, okay, so let's keep going. Uh, we could change the spot angle by using a light set spot angle, and that'll change the spot angle. However, if we were, say, directional, we wouldn't have that option, but that doesn't matter. We can still set it on the light component. It just wouldn't be used. Okay, so what about use color temperature mode? Well, we can use a light set use color temperature in order to change that. We can change the color of it with a light set color node. We can't change its mode because this isn't something that happens at runtime. This is something that's baked into the Unity editor. However, we can change the intensity with a light set intensity node, or we can set the bounce intensity instead. We can set the shadows to be none hard and soft, much like we have over here. We can set the cookie texture by using a light set cookie node, and so on and so forth. However, it's not just the light component that we can change. What if we want to change its position? Well, that's dealt with by the transform component. Its position is here, so we just want to use a transform set position node. However, for technicality reasons, it's actually local position and not actual position. That's just because that any rotations we do on the lamp will affect its child. And so this is local and not global, but the point still remains. Okay, well, let's come back to our button. Let's look at mesh renderer. What if we wanted to change its shadows? Well, we can look at our mesh renderer and type in mesh renderer shadows. And we can set shadow casting mode to change whether or not this object will cast shadows. We could change its material even by using a mesh renderer set material node. And this will change what material it is. Or what if we want to come to its mesh collider? We could change that with a mesh collider set is trigger. And with this, we can make it not a trigger anymore and actually make us physically collide with the object. Or what if we wanted to make it not a cube? What if we want to make this a sphere instead? We could look at its mesh filter and use a mesh filter set mesh node. And we could set it to a different mesh. Say the default sphere, for example. Honestly, it's really easy to figure out what you need to do, provided you can see what you need to do to each component to get the desired effect. So we'll cover a couple examples soon, but before we get to that, I just want to cover variables. You see, I used a public light variable and plugged it into my light set enable node. Okay, so I guess the first question is, what is a public variable? What are variables, just in general? Well, the technical terminology for this is that variables are pointers to bits of the code. Now, that's not very useful unless you're familiar with coding, so let's expand upon that and simplify down. So now let's just focus on this node. And I'm just going to delete my public variable and get back to it later. Okay, so here we have a node and we can see it's got two values. Uh, the first value is the instance value. And the second is this one that's just labeled value. Now, if we come to our light game object and we look at the light component that we're going to change, the first thing we can see is that this is a checkmark variable. This means our node must contain a checkmark itself in order to say what the new value will be. And we can see that with the value slot. If this is checkmark to be true, it will enable our component, and if it is checkmark to be false, it will disable our component, or disenable our component. I don't know. So now that we know what the value slot is, what does the instance slot do? Well, this is going to sound a bit mean, but Unon is not a mind reader. If you tell it to change a light component to be active, you need to tell it what light object you want it to turn on. Do you want to turn on the light component that's on this object? Well, that wouldn't actually work on the case for our button because the light game object is on a different object. Is the light object a child of the object that you wanted to turn on on this button? Or what if when you turn on this light object, what about other ones in the scene you want to turn on? We need to be more specific. So what we need to do as coders, we need to say what exact light component we're referring to whenever we use a node that's calling and changing a light component. So in order for us to get this light object into our scene, what we really want to do is grab this light object and put it into our graph. And now we have our object inside the graph and I can plug it in. However, what we've seen here is actually a shortcut in Udon Graph, and it doesn't tell the complete story. You see, what we've created here is a public light variable. That is to say, we've created a way of plugging our game object into our code when we go to use it. Now, if I was to try and think of an analogy for public variables, you could think of them as ports on your computer. You've got the USB port, which is your game object one, which can be used for so many things. But then you've got your other ones, like your Ethernet cable, which is your internet that plugs in. And then you've got your power connector slot, which only a power cable can go into, because USB ain't going to power a 300 watt computer. So in order to bring this all back, that is to say, we need a way of creating our isolated code and creating slots that we can plug into our Udon component to be used elsewhere. 
You can see now that we've plugged in this light lamp, if I was to play test this and actually tell it to turn on the light, we can see that when we walk over and we click the button, the game crashes, as we can see in the log down here. Okay, so why did it crash? Well, that's because we didn't tell it what light to turn on. Okay, okay, but we dragged and dropped it into our graph. Surely it knows what light component to use. Well, that's why I said this was a shortcut and kind of deceptive in the way that it works. You see that on our Udon behavior component, we can see our public variables and we can see our light lamp public variable. However, when we look at it, we can see the words none light. This is saying that this is a public light variable, but it has no light actually plugged into that slot. When we dragged and dropped our lamp light component into the scene, all it did was create a plug that we can later on plug into our code. What we really need to do, and I'm going to show the jank way first, is we're going to create another inspector window. We're going to lock our original one, come to our light lamp, and we want to drag and drop our light component into this open port that we made on our script. And now it knows the exact light component that we need to use in our script. Now, as you saw, that was pretty janky in terms of how we actually put it directly in. So if I was just to close the second inspector, the other way of doing this, if I was to reset this public variable, we can actually drag and drop the game object from the hierarchy directly into this, and I'll find a lamp component on that game object, if there is one, and put it into that slot. It is a very useful shortcut that Unity is edited in, and I use it all the time. Okay, so getting back to the topic at hand, why on earth does dragging and dropping a lamp light light component, say that a couple of times, why on earth does that not automatically fill in the slot? Well, that's because a script isn't meant to be used in one location necessarily. So what we've got here, if I come back into our scene, is that we've got this button that turns on and off this light. However, if I come to this other button, this also has a light that I've made this a child for whatever reason. Now, what I can do is I can come over to our button, I can create an Udon behavior component, and I can drag and drop the exact same script on it and just tell it to toggle on and off a different light. So now we're going to be telling it to toggle on and off this light. And if I was to playtest this, we can see that this one turns on this light when I click it, and this one turns on this other light when I click it. But it's the exact same script. And this is why public variables work the way they do. The ultimate idea of creating a script is that you can use it in multiple places in your code and it won't all call the same objects. Imagine if you had 10 mirror toggles and you had to create a new script for each and every mirror toggle. That would kind of suck. Or what if you've created a mirror toggle in one world and so you can just drag and drop that into your new project and use the same script but just in a different world referencing completely different objects. And this is the advantage of why Unity uses public variables. So now when we dragged and dropped our public variable into our script, it created a public variable called lamp light. However, that's a completely different name to our point light that's on our button lighting game object. So how can we change the name of the light? Well, if we come back into our Udon graph, we can double click it and I'm just going to call this target light. And so now whenever you rename this, you will lose all your public variables. So we will need to retell it the lights that we want it to use. However, now it's got a much more appropriate name that can be used on multiple scripts. So now I think I've gone a bit long talking about public variables. However, I do want to tell you how you can make these manually without having to actually drag and drop them in. In order to do that, we currently have a light variable, and then on the drop down we can see that it's marked public. We can recreate this by clicking this little plus button here, and I'm going to create a light variable, and then I'm going to call this target light 2. Then we can hit this drop down menu, and we'll make it public, and all this public means is that we'll be able to see it inside the inspector, much like we can see with the public variables here. And if we just drag and drop this in, and plug that in, we can see down here that we've got two public light variables. And depending on which one's plugged into our light set enable node, we'll determine which one of these variables we'll play. So this is the more manual way of doing this, and personally this is the one I prefer, as quite often this is the case is the name of the object is ambiguous to what it actually is. And also secondly, I've also had some issues where I've dragged and dropped a variable in, and it's crashed my script, and I've had to just copy everything and create a new Udon graph, paste it all in there, and then delete the old Udon graph. I don't know if that's still a problem, but when I was first testing this tutorial about a month ago, there, there was a problem I was having. Awesome. Okay, so I, I promised I'd show some more examples, so let's get on to that. So let's just reapply this code to the original variable so it doesn't cause any problems. Then I just want to come into my scene and let's just start changing some stuff. Okay, so over here I have a sound cube. And I like to create a script that turns on and off this audio source. We've also got play and wake on this component so that it will play whenever this audio source is enabled. So I'm going to click on my button. I'm going to create another Udon behavior component. I'm going to come down here and create a new script. I'm going to open up the Udon graph. And now if we look at our audio source, we can see that the component we want to change is an audio source component. So we want to go audio source, and then we want to go set enabled, because we want to hit this enable button. Now there's a button, so we want to use the event interact. Once again, looking at my tutorial on events to learn how events work. Now we want to change its value to be true, 
And second of all, we want to tell it what audio source we want to change. So I'm going to come up here and create an audio source. I'm going to call it target audio source. And I'm going to make it public so we're able to see inside the inspector and plug it into the instance slot. So now if I hit compile and come back into our scene, we can click on our cube, give it our new script. And then we need to tell it what audio source, which is this audio button over here. So I'm just going to grab my audio button and drag and drop that into our public variable. And now if I hit play, we can come over here and we can click this button and we can hear some music play. Okay, well, let's do a couple more things then. On this component, there's a couple more things we could change. We could change the clip it's playing. We could play the output. We could mute it. We could spatialize. Um, we could also change it whether or not it loops. We can change its pitch and volume. Oh, pitch. Let's do that one. Let's come back into our cube. We're just going to open up the Uden graph. I'm going to change this audio source enable node to an audio source set pitch node. I'm going to change its pitch to say free. And now when we play, we can come over here and click this button. However, we didn't tell the music to play, so it's currently off. In fact, we can see that the pitch is actually set to free, which is correct. It's just not currently playing. So if I toggle that on manually, which we normally do somewhere else in the code, and we can see that it's now really fast because that's what pitch does in Unity. Okay, well, actually, how about we turn on the object and then change the pitch and then let's increase the volume because it's quite quiet. So we need free nodes for that. So I'm going to create an audio source set enable node because we first want to turn on the object. I'm going to set its value to be true, and I'm going to give it the same target audio source to use. So it will both be turning on the object as well as changing its pitch. And I'll be doing that to the same audio source, which is very important. Now we also want to increase its volume because I want to do that. So I'm going to create an audio source set volume node, and I'm going to set its volume to be one because currently it's pretty low. So now I'm just going to hit compile and come back into a scene. We can play test this. And now we can see that our audio source is currently not playing. Its volume is set to 0.31, as well as its pitch is set to 1. And when we click the button, we can see that all these values change. The audio starts playing, the volume is set to 1, and the pitch is set to 3. And now it's much louder, and still going really fast, because that's what pitch does. Okay, so let's stop playtesting. Okay, so now let's do something a little bit different. Over here we have a rock, and it has a rigid body component on it. This was changed whether or not it uses gravity or not. So we could have it so that it has gravity, and then we could toggle off gravity and use is kinematic. So how about we do that where we grab the object, it can drop, and then we'll change these two values. So to do that, I want to go to my button. I want to create an Udon behavior component on it. I then want to come in here and create a new script. And I'm going to call this toggle gravity. Now, I have had someone ask me why I don't just use the new program button on the Udon behavior component script. And that's simply because if you have Udon Sharp installed in your project as well, it's caused me problems every single time I've clicked the button. So that's just something to be aware of. If you've only got Udon Graph, it might work for you, but then you have to rename it anyway, so you might as well just learn the tree and just do it that way. Anyways, we can just drag and drop our program into this. We can open up the Udon Graph. And now if we click on our stone, we can see it's the rigid body we want to reference. So we want to create a rigid body set to use gravity node, as well as a rigid body set is kinematic node. And because it's a button, we want to use the event interact node and plug that in. So for the gravity, we want to turn that off. But for the is kinematic, we want to turn that on. Then let's join up the two arrows to make sure both nodes play. And we just need to create our variable. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to create a rigid body variable. And I'm going to call this target RB for short. And I'm going to make it public so we're able to see inside the inspector. Then I'm going to drag and drop this in, plug it into the instance slot on both ones, clean up my code a little bit so it looks a little cleaner, and then hit compile, come back into our scene, um, click on our button again, and we want to drag and drop our throwable stone into the public variable slot. And so now if we hit play, we can see that we can come over to our rock and we can see that it drops normally. How will we click the button? Now when we drop it, it stays in the air. Awesome. Okay, so I think that basically covers what we want to cover here. The last thing I want to cover is just how to make things toggleable. Now, I actually want to cover these set variable nodes in a different tutorial, but it's pretty basic and no one really wants to create a button that can only turn on something and not turn it off as a toggle. So let's quickly cover that here. To explain what I mean, if we come back to our lamp script, we can see that when we walk over to it, we click the button, but if we click it a second time, it doesn't turn it off. So let me just quickly cover that here. If we come into the Udon graph, and go back to our light script. What we can see here is our node and it's setting the light variable to be true. However, what we want to do is grab the current light variable and flip it to set it to be the opposite. So we can use a light get enabled node and this will get the current value of this variable. So we can simply plug this in here. We can use a Boolean unary negation node to flip it. Don't ask me why it's called that. You'll just have to brute force learn that. And now when we plug that in and play test this, we can walk over here and now we see that when we click the button a second time, it turns off the light. Awesome. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Feel free to like if you liked it. Leave a comment down below if you any questions. I now have links to my Patreon and Discord down below. And feel free to check out my other tutorials that I have on the channel. But until next time, bye!